Hello boys and girls, welcome to Bible Corner. It's Christina here with you today. I want to say a big thank you for tuning in to this video. We're going to kick off our meeting by singing a chorus. Now I know it might sound strange or feel strange singing a chorus from your home, but I want everyone to join in. We're going to make it super easy for you. We're going to put the words up on the screen along with some music that you can sing along to. And we're going to start and we're going to sing the chorus, He Made the Stars to Shine. He Made the Stars to Shine. And I want everyone at home to sing your very best and if you know the actions you do them too. So we're going to start, we're going to sing He Made the Stars to Shine, He Made the Rolling Seas. That was fantastic singing, boys and girls. I'm super impressed, especially with those of you who did the actions as well. We're now going to come to our memory verse, boys and girls, and we're going to try to get you to learn a verse from the Word of God. Now again, we're going to put the words up on the screen for you to read along with and to say along with us. Our memory verse for today is found in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7. Now 1 Samuel is found in the Old Testament part of the Bible and it is a book filled with stories about, you guessed it, Samuel along with other people as well. A book filled with adventures and with lots of action. Now our memory verse today says the words, 
For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And we're going to put the words up on the screen for you now. And again, it says there in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Now, what does this verse teach us? Well, it teaches us a very important and vital truth that God really is only concerned about how our hearts look before him. You see, man today is always so concerned about how you look like on the outside. But God is really concerned about how your heart looks before him. And he's concerned about whether you have sin in your heart or not. And that is why it's so important, boys and girls, that we have our sins washed away. Because that's what God is truly looking at. He's looking at whether we've got sin in our heart or not. And this verse teaches us that although man might look at how we look like on the outside, truly God only cares about how we look on the inside. And it's so important for us to have our sins washed away. And maybe you're sitting thinking, well, if God is looking at my heart, he would see sin in my heart. Well, the Bible tells us that there is a way for us to get rid of that sin through the Lord Jesus Christ and asking him into our hearts to take away our sins. And our story that we're going to be looking at in a wee moment or two, it teaches us this great truth and reminds us that God truly is cares about how our hearts look before him and if we love the Lord with all of our hearts. So what we're going to try to do, we're going to try to say it together. So I will count you in. I'll go one, two, and then we'll all start with the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. Okay, so after two, one, two. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. That wasn't too bad, but I think a lot of you could do a lot better. So we're going to say it another time after two again. One, two. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, For man looketh on the outward, but the Lord looketh on the Fantastic. That was really good. We're going to say it one more time just to get it really into our heads. So one more time after two. One, two. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Brilliant. Well done. Okay, one last time. But what I want you to do for me this time is I want you to try to not to look at the screen. So I want you to close your eyes or turn away. And we're all going to try to say it without looking. And we're going to see if we've really got it into our heads. So one last time, we'll try to say it without looking. Okay? After two, everybody's eyes closed. One, two. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. That was really brilliant, boys and girls. Well done. You've learned a memory verse from the Bible. And again, remember the truth behind that memory verse, that it truly matters how our hearts look before God. We're now going to come to our lesson for today, boys and girls. But before we do that, we're going to come and pray first. And we're going to ask God to come and help us to listen and to understand what is being taught in our lesson today. So I want everyone to fold their arms, to bow their heads, close their eyes and ask the Lord to come and help us. And even though you're at home, even though you might not be in a church, you can still pray on to God. And I want everyone to have their eyes closed, their heads bowed, arms folded as we come and pray on to God. Let's pray, boys and girls. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee, Lord, for the chorus we've sung, for the memory verse that we have learned. And we just pray, Lord, you'd help us now as we come to your lesson, help us to understand what is being taught in thy word. And we pray, Lord, that you would come and speak to each one of us today. For your name's sake, we ask all of these things. Amen. Our lesson for today, boys and girls, is actually the story behind the memory verse that we have just learned. And our story begins with a man called Samuel. Now, Samuel had a very special job from God. He was a prophet. And as a prophet, he had the job of anointing the kings that were to be the kings over the land of Israel. Now, the very first king of Israel was a man called King Saul. Now, when King Saul started his reign, he loved God with his heart. 
But as he went on his reign, he began to love God less and less, and he soon fell away from God and the things of God. And it all came to a point one day when God gave Saul a very specific set of instructions. But instead of Saul following those instructions, we are told that Saul went his own way and he disobeyed God and he sinned against God. And because of his sin, God decided that King Saul would no longer be the king over Israel. Now that shows us, boys and girls, how serious God sees our sin. You know, some people, when they think about sin today, they think of it as some light thing that doesn't really matter that much. And they think they can just tell a little lie and doesn't really matter or do a little something that's bad and doesn't really matter. But this shows us how serious God sees sin. And he does. He sees it as something that is very serious, boys and girls. And that is why it's so important that if you're not saved yet, if you have not asked the Lord into your heart to take away your sins, that you do so now. You come, ask the Lord to take away your sins because sin in the eyes of God is something that is very serious. So God no longer saw Saul as the king over Israel. And we're told that Samuel was very upset at what Saul had done. He was very upset that Saul had disobeyed the laws of God. And Samuel would no longer go and speak to Saul. But one day God came to Samuel and told Samuel to stop mourning for Saul and that God had chosen a new king over Israel and that he wanted Samuel to go and anoint this new king. Now this new king would be found in the little town of Bethlehem. And I'm sure most of you who are listening will know where else in the Bible we read about the town of Bethlehem. Yes, of course, it was the place where the Lord Jesus Christ was born. And so this new king would be found in the town of Bethlehem. And God wanted Samuel to go to that town and to anoint the new king. Now he was to go and visit a man called Jesse. Now Jesse had eight sons and one of those sons was going to be the next king. But God didn't tell Samuel who the son would be. But God said to Samuel, where do you see them? I'll tell you which one is to be king. And so Samuel made his way to Bethlehem and there he met Jesse and his family. And we're told that Jesse presented his eldest son to Samuel. Now if anyone was going to be king, it was going to be the eldest son. Now his name was Eliab. And when Samuel saw Eliab, he thought to himself, wow, he looks like he could be king. Now Saul, the king that God had chosen before, Saul was a really tall man and he stood out above everyone else. And maybe that's what Eliab was like. Maybe he was super tall, just like Saul. And when Samuel looked on Eliab, he thought to himself, well, he could be king. He's just like Saul. But remember what our memory verse tells us, boys and girls. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. And when God looked on the heart of Eliab, It was a sinful heart. It was a wicked heart. It was a heart that did not love God. And so although Eliab might have looked like a king on the outside, in his heart, he was wicked and he was evil. And so God came and told Samuel, no. And he said to Samuel, those words that we've learned in our memory verse a moment or two ago, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. And so Eliab would not be king. So then Jesse brought forth his second son, Abinadab. Now Abinadab, he perhaps looked like a warrior. He looked like he could lead the army of Israel into battle and be victorious over their enemies. But again, God came and told Samuel no. Because just like his oldest brother, Abinadab had a wicked and evil heart and he did not love God. And remember, God looks on the heart. So although Abinadab might have looked like a king, His heart was wicked and evil. So then Jesse brought forth his third son and he was called Shammah. Now maybe Shammah looked like he could sit on a throne. He looked wise. He looked like he could negotiate with all the nations surrounding Israel. But again, God came and told Samuel, no. Again, just like his two oldest brothers, Shammah had sin in his heart. He did not love God with all of his heart and he had sin in there. And so God said no. Now we're told that seven of Jesse's sons passed before Samuel. And each time 
God said no. And there was no sons left. And Samuel, you can imagine Samuel maybe scratching his head and thinking, well, did I get it wrong? Has God got it wrong? And he came and he said to Jesse, Jesse, do you have any more sons? And Jesse thought for a moment and he thought, well, oh, well, there's one more. There's David, but it can't be David. He couldn't possibly be the next king. He's a shepherd. He couldn't be the next king. But Samuel said, no, go and get David. And sure enough, David, he was out in the fields looking after the sheep. And a messenger came to him and said, David, you must come home. Samuel the prophet wants to speak to you. And so David got himself and ran back to Bethlehem to his father's house. And David came in and, you know, maybe he was looking a bit dirty. He'd been out in the fields all day, out with the sheep. Maybe he smelt a little bit. And, you know, he didn't look like a king. But that didn't matter. Because unlike his brothers, David had a heart that loved God. He had his sins washed away and he believed in God and his heart was clean and pure. So although he didn't look like a king on the outside, on the inside he had the heart that God wanted for the new king of Israel. And God said to Samuel, Arise, for this is he who will be the king. And so we're told that Samuel anointed David as the next king over Israel. You know, David had a heart that pleased God and a heart that loved God and followed God. And that is why God chose him to be the king, the next king over Israel. And the question for you who are listening today is how does your heart look before God? Do you have a heart like David or do you have a heart like the rest of his brothers? Do you have a heart that has your sin washed away, a heart that loves God? Or do you have a heart full of sin? and that hates God and wants nothing to do with God. Boys and girls, I hope that you will have a heart like David and you can have a heart like David. All you have to do is come and ask the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart and he will take away your sins. And then when God looks upon your heart, he will see a heart like David's. He will see a heart that is pure and that is clean and has its sins washed away. Because remember what our memory verse teaches us. Man might look on how we look like on the outside, but God cares about how our hearts look. And that is why we must have our sins washed away and have our hearts pure and clean. And the only one that can do that is the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to finish off our meeting with a wee word of prayer, boys and girls. So again, I'd ask you to fold your arms, bow your heads, close your eyes, and we'll ask God to speak to us and help us even to remember the lessons that we've learned here from David and from Samuel. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the lessons that we have learned from our story today. And Lord, how it is important how our hearts look before thee. And we just pray, Lord, if it be any boy or girl who is listening, Lord, who knows that they have sin in their heart, that they will come unto thee, ask thee for forgiveness, and that they then too will have a heart like David's, a heart that loves God, a heart that is pure and clean. Lord, be with us now, we pray. For name's sake, we ask these things. Amen. Boys and girls, I really hope that you enjoyed our lesson for today. You will find attached to this video a worksheet that you can download and fill out with questions on it from our lesson for today. And then this time tomorrow, we will post the answers on our Facebook page so you can see how well you did. Thank you once again for watching another video from Bible Corner and keep your eye on the Facebook page over the next few days for our next video. And again, if you have any questions or we can be any help to you, leave us a comment below or send us a message on Messenger and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you again, boys and girls, and we'll speak to you really soon.